from Beaumont, Texas. And uh, I'm here to say I am humbled and honored that I have the support to be the next speaker of the Texas House. I have secured the supermajority of the Republican caucus. However, in Texas, we set politics aside and work for the benefit of all Texans. Leadership must be diverse. It must look like Texas and give a meaningful voice to different people from across the state. Therefore, I'm also proud to announce a broad coalition of support from the Democratic caucus as well. Politics is over. Last night was tough. It was tough for a lot of people. It was a very long, long process. And now it's time to heal. And the service begins today. I will be releasing the names of my supporters later on this afternoon. The race is over. And the work of the 150 members coming together to serve Texas begins today. I'm sure there's a question. What was the convincing argument of the members for the candidacy as you uh, read the feedback in that? You know, as Scott, I'll even use one of your articles as, as, as reference. It's, a, it's, about, it's about being an honest broker. It's about calling balls and strikes. It's not about politics. It's not about vote records. It's not about policy, really. It's not about where you're from. Um, it's about trust. And I think the majority of this, of this list right here that will continue to grow, um, they trust me. And, uh, and I, I, I put my trust in them as well. And um, I walked in this building in 1994 as a young staffer. And here I am today. I love this institution. I love the Texas House of Representatives. And we're going to maintain this integrity and this bipartisan uh, work ethic. And we will come together to face a budget deficit, COVID-19, redistricting, next session together. And that's my promise to every member of the Texas House. Thank you all for being here. Do you know how many people we have on list? You'll find out today. Mr. Chairman, talking about the Where do you start? I mean, there, there is so much to tackle in this session. I know, you know, education out there, certainly COVID-19 issues, other health care issues. Where do you start? And, and well, I start with meeting with, I, I've made a commitment to everyone on this list and everyone who will be on this list that I will come to them between now and session to the community and hear what they want to, what they want to accomplish. Because I don't know what, you know, what works and what's important in El Paso may not be important in, you know, in Beaumont. What's important may not be important in El Paso. And uh, everyone has different goals this session and different um, things they want to accomplish. And, you know, this was a very short speaker's race, obviously. Typically, they last a year. This lasted a week. So the opportunity to go out and, and meet members one-on-one -on -one to hear what is impacting their community that was not able to be accomplished, but that will be between now and session. And I have a good idea of, of what uh, many members are, um, are focused on. Uh, it will be a difficult session to accomplish a lot because of COVID-19, because of the budget deficit, and because of redistricting. We don't know what session is going to look like. We're still going to work through that. And there are some great ideas out there uh, as to uh, allowing the press in as much as possible, the, the public in as much as possible. It's difficult to vote on issues that affect 30 million people without the input of the public. So we will work through that. Uh, that's, we're on the early stages of that. I will have a transition team in place early next week, and we will start tackling all those issues. Uh, it, and I want voices from, from all corners of the state to uh, weigh in on that. And all my members and our new members elect, because we have a lot of members coming in who have not an opportunity to address how they want to see session. Thank you all very much.